I want to uh, talk about the mass market. And, you know, the mass market sounds like um, a group of people who all think the same, but, you know, within the mass market, clearly there's a whole lot of different people there. And I want to talk about some of the things that we've learnt in talking to the, to the mass market. Um, and I think, you know, the headline point of the mass market is the same thing that Ahmed, the same statement that Ahmed made earlier, and that is, you know, they spend eight minutes a year thinking about electricity. It's not the most important thing they do. And I think as we move forward in developing our tariffs, we need to be cognizant of that. We need to find better ways to talk to the mass market, to the larger market, about the opportunities that new tariffs present for them. Obviously, for prosumers, people who've got an investment in energy, their, their ears are open more and they're open to different messages, but there is still an opportunity there. I think the things I want to share with you, first of all, is to recognise, and we tend to forget this, uh, and that is that one size doesn't fit all. When we, when we push a tariff out into the marketplace, one message, a couple of channels delivered in the same language, offering the same value proposition, is not going to resonate with everyone. You're going to pick off people who can pick up that message and they're going to be interested in it, but a whole lot of other people are going to sit on the sidelines either disassociated with it or not really understanding what your message is. You also need to recognise that within that market, there are some people who just don't want to listen to you ever and they never will want to listen to you and you just have to accept that, move on. Great if you can identify them because you'll save money not talking to them. Um, you also need to recognise that when you run tariffs out, you know, um, and I think this has been shown over and over again, the, the ones that have the biggest impact, the ones that reduce their demand the most, you know, it usually represents 25 to 30% of the people that are on the tariff. Not everyone has the same response rate. Um, and that's, that doesn't say that the, the tariff is a failure. What it says is you need to find different ways to explain that tariff to other groups so that they can learn to respond the way that the people who are interpreting your messages are responding. And that means different versions of the same message, different language, different channels, and maybe some, some alternate or variances on the tariff that allow people to participate in ways to reduce their energy. So who are these segments? Well, we've done a lot of work, and I should give credit to the Queensland University of Technology and the social uh, and behavioural scientists up there. We did a lot of work um, segmenting customers from the electricity market, and we looked at it not from an energy market point of view, but from a customer market point of view. And what we found was households have a style. All households have a style. It depends, doesn't matter what type of household makeup you have, whether it's a share household, a traditional family, young kids, old kids, retirees, they all have a style and they face the world with that style and, and they use that style whether they're buying holidays, deciding on an internet provider or deciding where they're going to eat tonight. And the, pre the predictors of that style are based upon how, what goals that that household group are trying to achieve. It's based upon the bureaucratic structure within the household. It's based on how they make their decisions and how information comes to them. And the thing about that is when you look at that and start to segment households, there is a lot of segments there, but there's six big segments that come out of, of those groups. And the thing about understanding those segments is once you understand those segments, you can identify the perceived barriers that they see in taking up things like tariffs. And it's important that you understand, I say perceived barriers, because it's all perception. Often they're not big issues, but they perceive them to be big issues. And once you understand the perceived barriers, it gives you an insight into the value propositions that you can design to overcome these barriers. Um, and interestingly, the work that we did in this space, City Smart are continuing to do with some of the networks and energy networks, uh, sorry, ECA have, have funded a lot of this work as well to get us to where it is. But it's really, really interesting that this exists. Um, the thing is, it's not rocket science. If you go and look at any website of a financial institution, you'll see them pushing all sorts of offers that target different segments out in the market space. You'll see mobile phone carriers and internet providers. You know, this is just everyday business. This is how people engage mass markets. But what does it take to really, really win in this space? Well, what we've found, first and foremost, is trust. And we all know that trust is lacking in this market. But we need to not forget the importance of that. We need to keep building upon trust because if you're going to change behaviour, people need to believe in you first. Um, we need to consider language. Across Australia, when we talk about tariffs, you know, you've, you've just got to spend half an hour on the internet. You understand how variable 
the language that's used to explain different tariffs and different terms within the market. So we really need to get a better lexicon. We need to make it painless and probably we need to make it fun for people to engage with new tariffs. And that's really important. And we need to make sure we're giving them immediate feedback. You know, when people start to make change, they need to know that it's working. They need encouragement. They need to know that they're heading in the right direction. And I guess um, just one other side that I just wanted to share with you is we need to make sure that we phrase our messaging from the point of view of what's in it for them. Not what's in it for us, not what we want to achieve, what's in it for them. And probably one of the real, most really interesting things I saw from some of our research was a little an aside that one of the researchers made, and they were talking about uh, predictors of people committing to tariffs, what was important to them. And on this slide, they, they showed from the most important down to some of the least important ones. And the most important one, believe it or not, was attitude. You know, their perception and their attitude and, and their, you know, just their feeling towards things like tariff. And I point to the Oklahoma um, example in the taxi. You know, when people have that attitude towards tariffs, it's not a big step for them to, to move to the next place, which is to try it. Right down the bottom, 17 times less important is the design of the tariff and the way it's explained. And yet, we tend to spend so much time on the shiny brochures that do that and not enough time building the background that, you know, pushes it on. Um, so I just want to finish by saying I think the other thing I've found is technology and digitisation has created great opportunities in the tariff space. To create that environment, believe it or not, there's some great opportunities through social media to build great trust online because, frankly, when you push content into a social media setting, you very easily get shot down if you're wrong, but you very quickly get built up if you're helping and providing people assistance. It gives you the opportunity to provide real-time benchmarks. It gives you the opportunity to test your messaging, pull it back if it's not working, reinforce it to send targeted and different messages to different people. Um, sure, not everyone is connected to a digital world, but a big chunk of us are, and it grows every year. Um, and the other interesting thing about uh, rewards for taking part in tariffs, you know, we all know about the financial rewards that can exist but there are so many more opportunities for rewards that we've found, and one of them is intrinsic rewards. And that is the sense of self-fulfilment people get from winning, from showing that they can achieve things, and that can be delivered in spades in a digital world. So there's lots more information on the things I've spoken about, particularly if you go to City Smart and talk to them about it or get hold of me and I'll point you in the right direction. Um, yeah, I think I'll finish it there. Thanks.